Is your dog prone to outbursts on leash? Happens to the best of us. Fortunately, this is a very common and very workable behavior. Understanding leash reactivity. What does it look like? It could look like this, or this, or this. Why does it happen? Think of the leash as a beautiful, important, absolutely necessary, life-saving tool that can feel unnatural for some dogs who haven't been completely conditioned to it. Dogs are very aware of their environment and a leash safely restricts their ability to physically react to it in ways they would choose to without that restriction. In certain situations, this restriction can cause dogs to feel frustrated, insecure, nervous, or fearful. So how do we address it? We do this slowly over time by showing them that positive things happen when their trigger or reason for their reactivity is nearby. Understand and accept that this will take some time because you are literally helping your dog to change their perception of the world. Training tips. Use high value treats. High value is important because you want your dog to want to work for them, especially outside where there's a lot of competing stimuli for their attention. I love shredded chicken for training because it's cheap, most dogs go nuts for it. It's not hot garbage for your dog, and you can get a ton of mileage out of it. Meet them where they're at. We start addressing these behaviors by working with the dog where they're comfortable, because when a dog is here or over thresholds, they can't really hear you. No one's home and they're not gonna snap out of it for a piece of chicken. So if the entire outside world sets your dog off, you start in the living room. You build up tolerance and you graduate to the doorway, and then the front porch, and so on. This desensitization exercise is completely reliant on teaching your dog to connect the thing that sets them off to positive things happening for them, which means the rewards need to be coming while their trigger is just far enough away that they're not fixated on it. If they cannot pull their attention away from the trigger, you're too close and need to get more distance. Potential setbacks. If your dog has little to no interest in the reward you're using, it's not going to work. Find what really piques their interest by experimenting with different things. Asking too much too soon. Notice how I don't ask Clarity to do anything for the chicken while dogs are barking at her over there? No sit, stay, or look at me. It just fell from the sky and it was enough to drag her attention away from the spazzy dogs while she was pretty close to falling over threshold. Realistically speaking, reactivity is not gonna be curved in a day, so you should still expect to experience it. 
Fortunately, there are some wonderful tools that will give you more control while keeping walks pleasant for both of you. Do not underestimate the power of a solid harness. You need a front clip harness and a martingale collar or a gentle leader and a martingale collar. The martingale for security, the front clip because it discourages pulling by turning them to the side when they pull forward, or the gentle leader for ultimate control. You control the head, you control the body. Don't forget to clip the leash to both of these things for extra security. Treat pouch. Super handy to just have around your waist for when your pup's being a very good girl or boy and could use a piece of chicken. A hood. This is similar to a horse wearing blinders. Looks kind of weird, feels kind of funny, but it really works for some dogs. A muzzle. If you're worried your dog might feel insecure enough to act out when approached by a person or a dog, why not have one? A leash. If your dog tends to redirect on the leash while out on a walk and you're not using a muzzle, I highly recommend a chain leash that they cannot chew through. Dexil Limited on Amazon has messaging options like no dogs, caution, do not pet, and nervous. If you do have a leash or dog reactive dog, even if you're taking every preventative measure, expect that eventually you may run into a stray or an overly friendly stranger, and that's okay. You just have to plan for it. Survey your surroundings and seek barriers or height. This could be a fenced front yard or a parked vehicle. I know people that have put their dog in a neighbor's trash can to avoid an altercation and people who have jumped into the back of a stranger's pickup. If it's an emergency, you'll probably be forgiven for your lack of social etiquette. Scatter treats. Assuming you have those high value treats on you, checking a few at an inbound dog has a chance at distracting them long enough for you to get away. Aversive interference. Citronella spray is a safe but powerful deterrent to carry with you. Air horns are an effective deterrent as well, but they are loud. And if your dog is reactive already, <coughs> you will probably want to look at other options first. Only use this in a serious emergency. While you're working on this, expect to get frustrated, expect to have setbacks, and expect it to take time. But it is absolutely doable. And after a little bit of practice, you might even find that it's kind of fun.